I often read in the comments that you need to learn a studio lighting. So let's do it today. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Aga and I'm a CG artist. And on this channel, we explore techniques and tools that will help you become a better artist. Today, I will show you how to create perfect studio lighting that you can use to showcase your models or for clients' work. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, so you are sure you won't miss any future tutorial. Here is the chair model I will be using. Also, I have a camera in the scene with the focal length value of 80. We'll start by creating a backdrop. I will use a plane object for that. I will increase the size a bit. Let's remove all the connections except one. Convert the plane to a editable poly. I will move this segment behind the chair and move the end of the plane closer to the segment. Now let's move this edge up. So we cover the whole frame with the backdrop. Looking good. We just have to chamfer this edge to make it smooth. Add more connections. I will move the whole plane back a bit. Not too much. Lastly, let's apply the standard grey material to the plane. Great, the backdrop is done. Now let's work on the lighting. We will start by creating a key light. If you don't know what I am talking about, stop here and watch my tutorial about lighting characteristics. I will put the link in the corner. I will create a rectangular light. Let's start with 30 by 30 centimeters dimensions. I will position it at around 90 degrees angle between light, object and camera. I will enable interactive rendering and starting working on the settings. As a reminder, the smaller the light, the sharper shadows are created. And vice versa, the larger the light, the softer the shadows. In the studio lighting, I like to have something in between. Even more soft. I like it. I will make it a bit brighter as well. Looking good. I will rotate the light so it faces the chair. And the first light is done. I will rename it to keep the scene clean. I will also remove the material from the object for now to create an universal lighting and at the end we'll tweak everything to match the material. Next, work on the fill light. I will duplicate the key light and change the name. I will rotate it and position so it's lighting up the shadows. It will be easier if we turn off the key light for now. Fill light should be larger and less intense than the key light. I 
will make it less intense. Let's see how it looks with the key light. Looking good. The shadows are nicely lightened. The most important thing is that shadows are going on in one direction. The biggest mistake is when the fill light is too strong that creates its own shadows. Now let's add some color. We'll make the key light more orange and the fill light the opposite, more blue. It will create a nice color balance. In the light settings, change the color type to temperature and make the key light more warm. In the fill light settings, to the opposite, make the light more cold. Looking great. You can see that the light is warm and shadow areas are cold. Base it's done, but we're not finished yet. Now let's lighten up the backdrop. I will copy the fill light and change the name. This light should be neutral. So I will change the color to white. I will position the light. The goal is to have soft and even lighting. I will make it lighter. Let's check how it looks with the other lights. Shadows are gone, which is good. Turn on the fill lights as well. Looking good, I like it. Now let's work on the rim lighting. A rim light is placed behind a subject that exposes the outline or rim of the subject with light. This lighting highlights the contours of the subject and helps to separate it from the background. Now let's create it in 3ds Max. I will turn off all the lights and duplicate the key light. Let me turn it on. I will make it colder. I will move it up and find the best position. Looking great. I just have to make it stronger. Now we just need to exclude the backdrop and make the light invisible. Some of you may say that's cheating and it doesn't look natural. Let me show you how photographers do it in real life. We would have to save two versions of the image, without the rim light and with the rim light. Then we would place both images in Photoshop. We would add the black mask to the rim light layer and paint some areas of the image where we want this light to appear. Likely, we don't have to do all of that. Now let's enable materials. I will change the backdrop color to match the chair color.
looking awesome. Let's adjust the lights a bit. I will make the fill light a bit stronger as well. Same with the background light. Lastly, I will make the key light a bit colder. Same with the fill lights, it will balance out the orange colors a bit. Okay, I think we did a great job together and I hope you are ready to create your own studio lighting. You can save this file and use it later, there is no need to create it every time from scratch. Now, if you found this tutorial useful, I would like to invite you to check out our visualization training and the book The Art of Arvis Images that will drastically help improve your skills. Both are available in our store. Click here to check it out. Bye-bye!